like yesterday And tomorrow will be just like today Just another manic Monday through Sunday So my psychiatrist suggests Prozac twice a day Today, just like yesterday and tomorrow will be just like today Just another manic Monday through Sunday So I'm a psychiatrist so just goes that twice a day I'm a rolling pharmaceutical Welcome rolling to the Page Planet Podcast. I'm Paul Paint. I'm Al Lawrence. And we've got a special guest counterclockwise in the house, hailing from Cleveland, yep. Ohio. What's up, Deacon? How you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. We had some technical difficulties trying to get it set up, but we're good. We're yeah, good now. It's not easy to get a podcast like this, you know, on the road. <laughs> but <laughs> here we are. Uh, welcome. Uh, so, Deacon, let me give you a, a little, give everybody a little background. I was up late one night working on my uh, graphic novel and just needed a distraction and found counterclockwise in foreverland the animated film it's like an hour long animated film i would describe it as the matrix meets beavis and butthead meets natural born <laughs> killers meets thriller wow that, okay <laughs> the hour long animated feature will trip you out and uh that's what it did to me so um can you just t- tell us about it like what the basic what the movie's about or? yeah yeah the scenario Okay, well, I don't want to give away the twist ending, I guess. So, it's basically um, me and Kaya were chosen to um, retrieve a mystical, magical glove <laughs> that basically holds the funk of the universe. The, fun- <laughs> the funk of 40,000 years. <laughs> 40,000 years. And uh, these cats called the funk giants were the keepers of the glove. <laughs> trade and um the glove was stolen from him so um it's actually kaya's the chosen one because she's the purest of heart mm-hmm. i'm reluctant i don't want to go the whole time i'm like yeah. kicking it and i didn't want to do anything and i want to play and i'm going to edit it in a clip from the movie but my favorite one of my favorite parts was when you know the dude starts singing the song and you guys are at like the club and and then and then you, you say like man, how can you be into that dude? <laughs> I can't believe you like that. And I and then I just knew it was your music, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's what you know, right? Yeah. Awesome. I was delicious. There's a whole backstory for him too. <laughs> I gotta yeah. add. I was impressed with the uh, with the opening number. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the opening song. I love that song. Yeah, the morning song. That's what I was gonna play too. Okay. Yeah. 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 Jim basically inspired that one. He was like, yo, we need a song with you guys waking up. We need a a morning kind of anthem going through the day. So we went back, me and Kaya wrote it. It came together real quick. I think we did the whole song in like 30 minutes. So let me me quickly then jump ahead to one of my uh, questions real quick because of some of the lyrics in there. Was was there a mental health issue um, (laughs) involved in the lyrics? Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Much, uh, day in the life, you know, <laughs> talking about psychiatrists and every other thing that was going on. It was on. a very honest too. Yeah, it was a very so, honest. So, so there definitely was a message you're trying to get out. Oh yeah, for that song. Yeah, I mean, right. it wasn't necessarily a message. More like when I make music, it's it's kind of like I, it's like a psychiatrist for me. You know, it's a way for me to just get all that emotion off of my chest. You know, that's what right. I use it for. And that's yep. basically what that song was. It really wasn't a message. It was like, yo, it's just another I day. Really you know? agree with you on that. I kind of use that. I, I use writing for that. I also do a little bit of music. And they, you're right. It's a good. Uh, it's a good vessel. Exactly. That brings me to a good, uh, good question. After the, watching the film, uh, I feel like I know you. I feel like I know Kaya. You know, uh, of course I don't. So can you tell us a little bit about how you became counterclockwise? Wow, we actually formed in 2001, like a little earlier than that, a little earlier than that. Like I said, the end of 2000, because I was going back and forth to um, New York City. Mm -hmm. Kaya is from New York City, um, Manhattan. And um, I had a studio up there on 38th and 8th. And um, I met Kaya, and um, she turned to the bass player. And we started just making music slowly, but surely we ended up living together shortly after because my situation got messed up. 
and we had an apartment up in the Bronx, in the heart of South Bronx, and we just started making music together, like making beats, kind of selling it to other artists, trying to trying to get signed, you know. We got a couple of almost signs and not signed, you know. Yeah. That's how it started, you know. Awesome. Hey, you guys, are, <laughs> I enjoy your music. Can you, uh, uh, can you tell us what some of your musical influences are? Oh, wow. I'm all over the map. Like, I love everything from, like, Nine Inch Nails to, like, Old Dirty Bastard to, like, wow, Radiohead, you know, The Beatles, you know, Tool, Ministry, um, a lot of old school hip-hop, Karis One, De La Soul, all of the Native Tongue, Tribe Called Quest, you know, wow, everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I listen to everything. Thelonious Monk. You listen to, to anything. <laughs> to, to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, let week. <laughs> yeah, like whatever I feel at the time. Like, we're yeah. totally open. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, hey, your voice is really cool. And <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's a different kind of voice. Deacon is a cool name, too. Is that the name that your mama gave you? <laughs> uh, actually, Deacon is a nickname of mine because when I was rapping in Cleveland, they used to call me the Deacon. And the burns comes from back younger, I was like a toothpick skinny. And I used to always put out little ill mixtapes and people would call me Mr. Burns. So <laughs> the burns just kind of form, you know. Okay. That's it's cool. That's cool. <laughs> uh how, now how did you hook up with Jim? And did you ever imagine you'd be acting? Well, I've always, always wanted to make an animated series about me and Kaya because we're so animated already, and I thought it would be so ill, so I, I always <laughs> wanted to do it, and I just didn't know because I can't draw, you know, and I didn't know who to, to talk to or anything like that in Cleveland, okay. and I'm a big animation geek, so I always look on the on YouTube middle of the night for ill animations and stuff, and I came across Jim's and one of his shorts, like um, the one about... Um, Tim Dog, no, the, the guy talking about the rapper, the uh, Raw Dog. Oh, um, yeah. I've anyway, seen I came across that. that and I was just like blown away. And I like contacted him. I was like, yo, are, do you think you'll ever be into doing like a rap video? And I sent him like three of our songs and I was like, yo, whatever song you think you would like. And he picked Moonwalk and like literally within two weeks, the video was halfway done. Oh, we wow. had the whole done and within little little under a month oh wow. and then i got three more videos and then we kept working i kept giving him beats for like his cartoons and we would do like voiceover work for a lot of his cartoons and we just been working non-stop back and forth and so oh. it was great man. <laughs> so that's kind of cool uh jim was describing to us a little bit of the process that you guys are sending lines back and forth to each other yeah um, you know, like four lines here four lines there yeah, uh, sometimes he'll send like lines and we'll just ad lib it. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll take a little bit of his lines and add our stuff to it. And then right. sometimes we'll send him a beat. And he'll be like, yo, I got really inspired and drew the scene up. And we would go <laughs> and forth like, you know, he was sending yeah. us tweets and him parts. And we built a whole movie like that. The whole movie took like a year. It would have been done sooner, but he was doing other projects at the time. Wow. Right. So yeah, you're, you're credited as a writer on this film. Uh, yeah. Do you think you'll do more of that type of thing? Oh, totally. I, I love it. <laughs> you know, I to do it. I always wanted to do it, but when we made Forever and I got to see, like, how you go about doing it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely inspired. You know, I, I already got a whole little plot for Forever Land 2, to tell the truth. Ready to <laughs> okay. I talked to Jim about it. He's like, okay. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm telling you, we got to do it too. It's going to be <laughs> <laughs> Are you, uh, do you want to stick strictly with uh, animation, or do you want to do a little live acting? I wouldn't mind to try a little bit of everything, as long as it's unique and like original, you know? Yeah. I'm just all about doing really unique pieces, you know? And that's why I love working with Jim, because his art is so unique, you know? Yeah, yeah, he's great. Drew us, he drew us like he knew us, you know? It was like perfect, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, he's inspired me. I don't know if you saw on the, on the podcast we did with him, but um, yeah. I've got about three months to go on my the graphic novel that I'm working on, and I'm like, 
you know, I put a lot of work into it. And I just want to toss it because I want to learn how to do the animation. Wow. <laughs> but I got to be patient. No. And, no. <laughs> yeah, I got to be patient. Just how much more you got before the novel's done? About three months. Wow. Nice. So, nice. But, uh, yeah, I really, you know, I, I want to learn how to do that animation. And, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's cool. It would be fun, you know. So maybe one day when I get good, I can do one of your videos, you know. Wow, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, after talk, after talking to Jim, Paul sent me a message. Um, he wanted to do some video shorts. He wanted, you know, add my music to it. And oh, really, uh, you make music? What kind of music? Um, my music is kind of all over the map. Um, itself, I'm highly influenced by Celtic, and then '80s. I guess you call it '80s pop. Wow, oh, that's very dope. Cool. <laughs> um, and I've I've got I'm I'm actually quite behind. I should have had it done a long time ago. I was, I was going to do a little promo video with Paul the uh, graphic novel, but also cutting out a little bit, Al. Yeah, he was going to do a promo video from for uh, my graphic novel. Wow. Now I got a question for you as a musician. If if I'm a guy that's in my you know in my mid forties and I can't sing, if I dedicated my life to it, do you think I could learn how to sing? <laughs> sing? I don't know if you're talking about singing like some Aretha Franklin, but <laughs> you could create your own style. You yeah, know? That, that, think about that. Like you don't have to sing in the you know conventional. Yeah. Everybody sings, you know. Right, right. Like yours is, you just have a unique voice. Yeah, thank you. Because a lot, of, I'm so glad you said that. Because like, when I was up in New York, we almost got a deal with Tommy Boy, and it was basically we had to get three votes, and the one lady loved us, but the other guy, his whole thing was like, oh, his voice is so annoying. Like we hate his what? voice. Like, nobody what? will ever like this voice. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, they're, they're just so weird how. Certain people love it and certain people don't get it. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I got guns and you'll be fine. Yeah, well, yeah, right, right. Just it's unique, well, you know. I, it's very unique, and I think the contrast between your two voices that's what makes it even more special. I mean, uh, yeah, because we just basically played it like ourselves. We're like we're going right. to be ourselves <laughs> and put in this fantasy situation and just roll with it. Yeah, that's yeah, it's awesome. I love the, the thing, you know. You know, uh, it's too damn bright out here. You know? <laughs> just stuff like that. You know, I could just tell. It's like, oh man, I feel like I know this couple. You know, <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. And uh, and then uh, opening the shades, and you're always like, stop opening. Like, the yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Kind of over on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I hate the sunshine in the and morning, I'm like, man. We need more light. I'm more of a the evening person. I Let think. the light in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, hey, we've gone through all of our notes. Now we're just gonna have to talk about your music. Um, awesome. You guys are coming out with your first album. Is it out already? I mean, I you know I went through your songs on YouTube. Yeah, actually, we came out with our first album in 2011, late 2011. Oh, okay. It was daylight savings time. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, and then since then, like we put out several videos and more singles, but this is our second, actually full length album, the Foreverland soundtrack. Oh, you okay, know? and yeah. that's all new songs. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a prolific writer and just creative. You know, uh, awesome. where does and where does your music come from? Like the inspiration. Wow, like I, I pretty much like I said earlier, man. I, I use it like a psychiatrist. You know. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of emotions, especially when we did the Foreverland movie, it was like going through a lot of demons and trying to stay positive by going through all, you know, the inner demons I was going through at the time. Uh -huh. So it was a ill movie, man. So I basically just write to express and get it off my chest, you know. Actually, I was, if, um, go ahead. Well, if someone were to put your music into a category, what, what, where, where do you think it would best fit? Well, and that. I have a problem with that because everybody's like, well, what kind of music are you making? I don't know how to describe it. It's like pop based, but it's a little little more than that, you know? I, I don't know how to describe it. I would just call it like hip hop, you know? I like to call it punk hop because yes. of okay. the emotion 
the punk attitude, you know, do it yourself. <laughs> I don't care what nobody thinks to ourselves. This is how we're going to make it. Like, you know, it's a Bob, I would call it personally. <laughs> yeah, I, that's another thing about the movie, that your attitude. Like, you're, stand, you're, you're in a wheelchair and you're coming up on some giants. And you're like, yo, man, what's up? <laughs> you know, I, I think most people would be like, you know, uh, oh, excuse me. I mean, I would. I'd be like, uh, oh, didn't mean to bother you, you know. <laughs> you're just like, yo, what's up, man? <laughs> like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I'm already in a chair. What else you know? You know? That's how so, people want to express that, like, that, have, like, almost like a, a wheelchair hero. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Through all, all that, you know, the chair was never an issue. You know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. you know, they were all, it was like, I mean, they never even seen a person in a wheelchair before. Yeah, they're like, look at that, he's got wheels for legs, you know. <laughs> exactly, they were blown away by it. Uh, I, I, one of the themes of the movie, you know, I don't want to give away the plot because I want people to watch it. And I want people to check out Counterclockwise. You can find them on YouTube, um, Counterclockwise and Foreverland. Just search for that. Um, but one of the themes of the movie, I have tried to capture in my graphic novel, uh, which my graphic novel takes place in Rust City, and it's supposed to be a real declining city. It could be Cleveland, you know, uh, where all the jobs have gone, and it's, you know, a tough city, but uh, people, there's still good people that live there, and there's still people trying to make a life for themselves, you know, and I thought you're, I thought that was a theme of the movie. Exactly, uh, for, it is like it's a couple of things in there, like, you know, just trying to do it for yourself, you know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. don't let no basically beat you down, you know, right. going through the things that you are, you know, you can still do it. Yeah. You know, that was the under thing for it, definitely. Yeah. And now it's easy to do when you got somebody with such a positive attitude like Kaya. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> how does she... <laughs> be positive about the whole outlook, you know? How does she... How does she like going from New York to Cleveland? Like, you I'm know, just gonna ask the same question. How was the transition for her? <laughs> it was hard at first for her. You know what I'm saying? Because Cleveland, she thought Cleveland was more like chickens and bucks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, this is a city, just like everywhere else. You know, so you're getting more used to it. We're back now in Lakeshore. Uh -huh. It's kind of like busy like that. It's kind of like a I don't know, like a, a lot harder actually than New York. <laughs> it's a lot harder because you like, can't just tell. She never drove <laughs> before because in New York City, it's really no need, you know. Right. So her to get used to learning how to drive has been a been an issue. <laughs> <laughs> She's learned. I actually, I I drive by Cleveland a couple times a year. I tend to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what can you do? But it, it's just it's my city, you know. It's like hey, the Bronx, you know. what I'm saying I got a roll with them, but yeah. I just uh, there was a a guy I knew years and years ago, and I um, met him. He was going to Michigan State, and I asked him where he was from, and he said he was from East Cleveland. <laughs> and I, I, I just started laughing. <laughs> No, to tell the truth, East Cleveland is no joke. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of real gangster. Down there. Very yeah, so you, you steer clear of East Cleveland yourself? My <laughs> family was, you know, down from East Cleveland on St. Clair. Like down where a lot of where the Bone Thugs and Harmony talk about mm -hmm. a lot. Down St. Clair and shit. But St. Clair is no kind of joke. That's East Cleveland, too. <laughs> I thought that in the movie, too. We try, to, we try to big up Cleveland in the movie as much as we can. Yeah, they, I like that's another one I like too in the movie. What's up, Cleveland? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's hilarious, hilarious. Uh, so, so, so do you got another? Are you working on another album? Do you guys have a record contract or like you're just independent? Uh, independent, independent. Actually, we're working on. We already have uh, another mixtape done. It's called Pills. And um, it should. I'm trying to give the soundtrack a little bit more time to breathe, like another month or so, oh, okay. and then we'll release a single. Because we have three videos coming up for the soundtrack. We have um, our first video is um, for the track "Run for Cover," and that's going to be done in like a week or so. My man Matt, he's animating it. Actually, him and Jim Luhan did um, a thing. Um, Master Melvin, they just oh. recently did it. Yeah, they did that together. Okay. No, we get music for it, but yeah, that cat Matt, he's gonna do on um, our new video. It should 
be done in a week or so. And we got two more videos in plan ready to make anyway. <laughs> man, you guys are just prolific. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep coming, man. We're going to keep coming. We're going to knock out the three videos. We're going to promote it a little longer. The um, movie is going to be in all the um, film festivals this year. We got in like 16 film festivals everywhere. We're going to promote the hell out of it. We're going to do live shows. We got a lot of live shows coming up. Because oh, yeah. when we perform live, we'll have like people in costume. It's going to be like Foreverland live. You know what I mean? We're yeah. going to do it like hip hop rock or a picture show vibe. <laughs> yeah. I read that. Which we had talked a few weeks earlier. Lansing just had a film festival. Wow. Uh, yeah, I wish I would know. And I guess it was like the third or fourth annual, and I never knew it existed. Um, but apparently this year had a really good turnout. Flint, Michigan has a. Uh, film festival, but a, a real big one in Michigan is Traverse City. I'm not sure if you're aware of that one. No, oh, when is that? Um, I think it comes up in June. Yeah, I want to. I'll get to send me the information. I'll, I'll submit the movie because we're hitting up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, like, I'll I'll look it up and um, I can get it to you. Yeah, awesome, man. Thank you so much because we're trying to hit up every little film festival, every little place that even bothers showing it you know we also had a screening in cleveland like about a couple of weeks ago and it went incredible dude it was like standing ovation you really it was like oh, it was man. fucked out because we go to the movie theater all the time and to see it on the big screen like the <laughs> biggest screen theater wow it was surreal you know? <laughs> yeah i bet man that's yeah. congratulations that's cool thank you so uh, much, uh i hate to be the bearer of bad news but the thing i just saw the deadline was may 15th Oh man. Um, it's okay. It's okay. We got a lot. We're going to hit everything up anyway, so we're good. Uh, and if you come out with something new next year, now you know. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. And I think we have a couple of things coming up new. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely keep my uh, eyes peeled for any kind of film festivals. You know? Yeah, so um, just send me a message. Because yeah. I, have... I, I thought that film was just classic. My, uh, my wife. Uh, I showed it to her. She's not a big animation fan or anything. Um, you know, she she just lets me go hang out in the basement and do my thing, you know. But uh, I, I said, you got to see this, you know. So she watched it for a while, and she's like, I don't know. I feel like we should be high or something. It's really trippy, you know. The story is trippy. The characters are really trippy. I was telling Jim. Uh, we were talking to Jim about it. I said it. I it kind of reminded me of um, uh, heavy metal. It, yeah, it, this has got a heavy metal vibe to it. You know, yeah, that trippy. It's like wizards, like way. It's kind of like on the wizards vibe too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, if you want to tell uh, Kaya, I just sent you a link, so you guys can uh, have it on hand. Um, I sent it through Skype. It's the Traverse City Film Festival um, website. Awesome. Thanks, man. And I got it. Let's tell everybody about uh, your where they can find you. We can find you on counterclockwise.com, right? Yeah, you can find us on counterclockwise.com. Counterclockwise with a K. Yeah, it's counterclockwise with a K. Spelt regular, just with a K. And, and we're everywhere. Good. We're on SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube, Reverb Nation. Just, you know, we have, you know, counterclockwise.com. We're everywhere, you know. We have the two albums out, the movie. We have like, wow, like probably like ten videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I uh, I sent out we a tweet. Lot of stuff, and actually, we're going. No, we're sorry, going I, all out this year. You know, between I, uh, and um, after we do the. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's great. Uh, I was just gonna say I sent out a tweet earlier saying that we were interviewing you today, and I I hashtagged you, and um, your name popped up everywhere. <laughs> wow, yo! So yeah, plenty of people are hashtagging you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Al, you're gonna have to explain to me how that. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I don't get how that whole thing works. We'll do that after, though. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Deacon, how many uh, instruments do you play? Wow, um, I can play the guitar, the bass, keyboards. And that's pretty much it, you know. I, I can kind of pluck, like, make noise with a violin. Like, we get samples from it, but I can't really play it, you know. Uh -huh. I can play and the bass and the guitar, keyboards. 
But so, do you do all like the uh, production of your music, or is that Kaya, or how does that work? Split it. We like basically oh. depends. Like sometimes she'll come up with a beat, and then I'll come up with a melody. Or sometimes I'll come up with a beat, she'll come up with a melody. Because I'll make beats on the MPC 2000 XL. It's like the drum machine, and she okay. makes beats more on like stuff like Reason, Fruity Loops, um, Garage Band, stuff like that. So we'll come together, we'll chop it up. Or I'll like sample what the beat she did and put in the MPC and then put it to Pro Tools. So it depends, you know, we're all over the map. We're actually working on an all rock um, EP. And it's going to be called um, Ironside. And it's just like all metal. Kind of clockwise metal is going to be like six songs, five, six songs. And we're going to have a live band put to it and stuff. I want to release it for like the end of the year. Wow, it sounds cool. Yeah, sounds man. Because cool. I want to be all over the map. I don't ever want people to try to pigeonhole us you know what i'm saying like yeah. i, I want to be everything <laughs> you're doing a good job as far as i'm concerned <laughs> hey okay we're at the point of the podcast where i don't know if you got the note on this uh deacon where we just bring up something random from our week oh so um uh you got anything al <laughs> yeah i did and i um oh yeah um I do uh, I do lawn care. That's my day job. And um, the other day, I was um, I saw there's a MSU student. You guys hear that wind right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> for for once, it's not coming out of my basement. Okay. Uh, there's this uh, MSU student. She was struggling with her lawn. Her grass was like at least a foot high. And uh, I got a, I got a 52 inch mower. So I go out. Oh. <laughs> hey, baby, I got a 52-inch mower. <laughs> <laughs> so I offer to mower lawn and, uh, and then cut her grass. Um, and <laughs> uh, then I got uh, You know, I, I said, you know, it was on me, but she ran out a little bit later and gave me five bucks and a kiss. So oh, I mean, uh, that, that made my day. <laughs> You gonna go? You going back or what, dude? Oh yeah, I, I go by the house regularly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just to check, just checking. You know, professional reasons. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't. I don't really. I can't think of anything, man. I have. You know, I just been running my kids around to. The, I'll uh, tell them about the Burner soccer match. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. My son plays soccer. Okay. Al doesn't get soccer, okay? And we, and we, and we pro I promise not to talk about soccer on the podcast, but he brought it up, so here we go. We we play. My son plays soccer all the time. I can't even count how. I mean, this season has been so many games. I'm running them all over the place. In fact, this weekend we're going to South Bend for a tournament. Anyway, uh, I, I we also play table soccer, and. The yeah. score we played this game. The score was zero to zero, <laughs> so I posted it on Facebook. Zero to zero. Al comments. Well, that must have been a barn burner. <laughs> you know, ha ha ha. Because you know, at least half the games are zero to zero. So um, then I had. I can't remember, but I think I had to call Al for something, and I said I'm, I got to take my son to a soccer game. Came back. Said Al, I just got back from the soccer game. Guess what the score was? Al said zero zero. That was the score. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the not, odds are in my favor on that one. Yeah, there's not a lot of scoring in soccer. We grew up playing basketball, you know. I mean, one twenty to one sixteen, you know. Exactly. Some scoring. Soccer is just too. I don't know. Long. You know, <laughs> it's really exciting though. <laughs> and finally, Some players have very nice legs. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. My dad played so Oh, our dad. He's got an amazing legs. <laughs> soccer player has amazing legs. Don't make legs. a soccer player mad. He'll kick you. Oh, yeah. 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 That's true. Yep. Uh, I guess the only thing I can say that happened. Um, I was really upset because I missed the season finale of American Dad. It was like, did you guys see it? Uh, I missed it too. <laughs> oh, man, because it was yeah. a continuation off. Because, you know, when Roger sent um, 
the girl's boyfriend away, like into outer space, and he finally returned. But she was like all oh, 80 years old, and <laughs> it was funny at the end. And I was so sorry that I missed it, yo. And <laughs> you guys watched um, Game of Thrones? No, I'm I'm waiting for Netflix to start streaming uh, streaming it. Oh, you, oh gotta you, know, you, you gotta watch Game of Thrones. You watch, watch it, Paul? You yeah, watch I mean, it? I, I watched like the first two seasons, and then and then uh, I have a hard time staying awake. So my for, I. Oh. Well, I mean, I love the show. It was awesome, but my wife and I, we watched, she watched the third season kind of without me, so she, we binge-watched it. So we're not, we don't have, we're not keeping up on it right now. We're going to wait for it to come out, and then we're going to just watch it all at once. Speaking of great shows, speaking of great shows, uh, Deacon, have you ever watched uh, Battlestar Galactica? Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> all I need to be said. Paul, start watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 wow. Yeah, that's how Al checks up on everybody, you know. If you're <laughs> if you got your battle card Yeah, if you got your Battlestar Galactica card, then you're in. <laughs> school. I, I I used to love the old school show of Battlestar. Yeah, that was live. <laughs> All right, man. Deacon and uh Kaya, thanks for coming on, man. It was a real pleasure to meet you. Uh hi Kaya. Hi, <laughs> Uh, anytime you guys want to come back on, I'll, we're going to follow you and keep up with you. And we want to see you blowing up all over the place. You know, you guys. Thank are, you so much, guys. This was really cool, man. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, by yeah, the way. Come on. Yeah, by the way, I was going to tell you this. There's two kinds of people in the world, Deacon. There's those kind of people when you ask them to be on a podcast, they go, sure. And then there's everybody else. And you're <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, wow, that's tough. <laughs> there's just yeah, I mean, it's no problem. I had a great time. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. It was fun. All right. Definitely uh, keep us updated on all your projects. Wow. Yeah. Anytime you want to come back on, we're going to try to do this. Thank you so yeah. much. Well, we'd like to get you well, we'll, on with uh, with Jim. We'll come back when the pills comes out. When our um, when the mixtape pills comes out, we're going to definitely hit you guys up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we'll try to. And I'd, we'd also like to get you on with Jim one of these days. Oh, yes. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the original plan, but I think it worked out good. Yeah. The way it happened. So, yeah. And thanks All for right. being patient, Deacon. All right. No, this, no. this has been the Beige Planet Podcast. I'm Paul Pate. I'm Al Lawrence. Deacon Burns from Counterclockwise. And Kaya, thanks for being on. Thank you, guys. Later. All right. Thanks.